Former politician turned best-selling author, he sold more than 300 million books worldwide. Yes, indeed. Geoffrey Archer is the only author to have a number one bestseller in fiction, non-fiction and short stories. And now he's releasing his first standalone novel in nearly a decade. Heads you win. Oh, one man, two lives, a family divided. Very good morning to you. Good morning. Um, people describing it as the best since Cain and Abel. Yes, the, the Do you consider the Cain and Abel your best, by the way? It's 40 years ago. People stopped me in the street and discussed things in Cain and Abel. I can't even remember <laughs> them. And I feel, yes, I did write it. Yes, I did. Yeah. <laughs> but do you consider, when you look back at all the novels that you've written, I mean, I would say that if you asked anybody which is, who's read yeah, you, that yeah, would be the one that... I, I think this may be better. I'm crossing my fingers. It's I... taken three years and I've put everything into it, so... Yeah. And, and the first standalone book in quite some time. Your last five books, is it, were all sort of uh, part of the... The Clifton Chronicle yes. came before. Mm. So, and, but I got the idea mm. halfway through the Clifton Chronicles and knew I couldn't do anything about it because I was enjoying writing the Clifton Chronicles. And I got the idea reading Colin Powell's memoirs. Right. Because I discovered his this is mother, former Maud, Secretary of State Maud, in, former Secretary in, of State in the United, the United States. States. His mother, Maud, was a seamstress in Jamaica, and she made the decision whether to go to America or whether to go to Britain. And I sat down and thought about that. Of course he went to the United States. What would have happened if he'd gone, mm. been born in Hackney and not born in Harlem? Mm. Would he, 60 years ago, have, had the same have opportunities? become a lieutenant at Sandhurst? Would he have become a field marshal. Well, a... Would he have followed Alec Douglas Hume and Peter Carrington as foreign secretary? I don't think so. It's a so. big story that immigrant, but immigrants... Years I mean, later. we always think... Well, I mean, my friends always think about this. My father's from Pakistan. If he hadn't left Pakistan, you know, mother hadn't left Kenya, where would I have been? I'm yes, but if, you'd no, gone, no. if he'd gone to America... If he'd gone to America... Would he have had different opportunities, do you Quite... think? And would you now... Yeah, who knows? Ah, I mean, who ah, knows? But, I mean, you just don't... It was your father who made it possible. Absolutely. If Colin Powell had come here, he wouldn't have found it possible. But 40... You're the right. total proof. <laughs> 40 years later... Mm. Yeah. Do you think you'd have been on this programme 40 years ago? <laughs> no, you wouldn't. Yeah. And that's an achievement mm. and shows the great side of immigration. Mm. So your story, set in, sort of based on that, set in Russia, Leningrad, about a young boy whose father works for the KGB and is assassinated. Well, I made the decision I couldn't steal the Colin Powell story, <laughs> so I put my boy in St Petersburg, Leningrad as it was then, and he, his father is killed by the KGB because he's a trade union leader and they don't like him. And he has to escape. His very tough mother, Elena, decides he has to escape. They go down to the docks and they come across two crates. One is going to the United States. One is going to Britain. And she says, which one? And they toss a coin. Oh, amazing. Heads you win. <laughs> mm. Right. That sounds, that sounds like a very Geoffrey Archer novel. Yes, to me. And I think without giving too much away, the story then, the structure of the story, I think, is quite interesting because don't you then, uh, you, you, you sort of write both sides of the story. Like yes. Don't give too well. much away. I don't want to give yeah, too much away. Sure. The, chapter, the chapter sort of rotates. The then the decision goes. was which country to go to. And that was the first mm. big idea. We'll send them to both. Right. Alexander can become Sasha and can become Alex, and you'll follow both lives and see how different they are because one went to America and one went to Britain. What do you make of Trump's America at the moment? I think I'm as appalled as most people. Uh, I think very frightening. What I have no doubt about is that we'll find out the truth in the midterm elections next week because that will tell us what the American people think, not what sophisticated Londoners like you think, <laughs> who are always out of touch. Yeah. And I'm out of touch That's as so well. True. We're but completely, they will... You're completely... Remember, you're in the Westminster bubble, you three. You're a waste the of liberal, time. I've only been the here two days. Give me a break. Elite. <laughs> Got it all wrong. Yes, They got it totally. wrong on Brexit. So even your cameramen are laughing <laughs> at Exactly. You. If only we'd listen to them. <laughs> um, and, we, and, and the West Coast and East Coast of America were absolutely convinced that President Trump didn't have a chance. I remember the night of the Brexit referendum, the papers, the early editions, came oh, out uh, with saying a, with, Remain had won yes, and it was time now to fix right. the divide. And I voted Remain and was convinced we'd win, but my attitude is simple. We lost, we live in a democracy, 
get on with it. I don't want a second referendum. Yeah, but get on with but it. But, Geoffrey, get on with what? Brexit. Yeah. I'm coming but out. What, what does terms? Brexit look like? We don't know until the terms <laughs> really? come back. <laughs> Even the Prime Minister doesn't know what it looks well, like. Well, how can she? It's, we're at the I, final I read negotiations. Somewhere that you you'd be you told three are being... Oh, you're at no, it again. I, no, I read somewhere that someone had told you on the inside that the deal's already been done. And they're, and they're... Oh, yes, I think there's no doubt that nine-tenths has already be, is already, frankly, printed up and in black and white. The Irish border's a problem. They'll sort that out. Don't kid yourselves. They'll sort that out. The budget, as you saw, was geared to make those dissident... Conservative MPs and several Labour MPs who want a strong relationship with Europe to come in and vote. It's all being very carefully timed. It could still fall apart. Mm. But my bet is they'll bring back a deal. My bet is the Parliament will vote and, for it. And, and who would be your preferred leader once we... Have Theresa sold? May, thank you very much indeed. Uh, I will tell you over the years, with some degree of experience, young man, in this particular subject, <laughs> that you cannot tell who's going to be the next leader of any party until two weeks before. You wouldn't have got Margaret Thatcher until two weeks mm. before. You wouldn't have got John Major until two weeks before. You wouldn't have got... Wouldn't have got no, you wouldn't have... Exactly. Mm. So Did you don't, have ask me in, don't ask me until two weeks. I'll come back on the show <laughs> two weeks before and answer your question. Mm. Did you ever want to be leader? Yes, of course. Everybody who goes in the House of Commons. <laughs> don't kid yourself. You've got 600 <laughs> people in there who think they should be Prime Minister. We, yesterday, we tried to uh, uh, anoint the Chancellor as Prime oh, Minister. Oh, no, I saw that. <laughs> you know, do you know, he's the one man who, when he came on and said it, I actually believe him. I don't think he's ever wanted to be Prime Minister. He always wanted to be Chancellor. I've known him mm. all my political life, all his political life, mm. and he's always, from the day I met him, he wanted to be Chancellor of the Exchequer. So, funnily enough, did Margaret Thatcher. Mm. If you'd asked her when the leadership battle came up, she said, no, I'm hoping I'll be Chancellor. That's the job she wanted. Is that and because then... that's the real power? When you're well, in charge of the purse strings and the budget, yes. you're the person wielding well, the power? Well, John Major famously said that the toughest job he ever had was financial secretary. Yeah. The second toughest job he uh, uh, was not quite as tough as Chancellor, and Prime Minister was easier than either mm. of them. Mm. It's the toughest job in government. There's no doubt about that. Mm. Well, well, it's good to talk to you. Yeah, uh, thank, thank you, you very much. much indeed. So you would put money on Theresa May staying as Conservative yes, leader I would. and Prime Minister? Yes, Get on with it. So you, you... you lot just... You're trying to fill in hours on television, and, <laughs> yeah. and I'll tell you, the cameramen know far more okay. than you do. Maybe you can have a word with David Davis and Boris Johnson and all the people who are agitating behind the scenes. It's not actually just the people media, it's the people you who... in the back <laughs> never make it. Oh. Can I It'll just say... be someone you least serve. Can I say, before you go, good luck with the book. I need That's to tell you something. This is, this is this is a true very story. I want to, I've just come back from India. Now, when you, come, when you go to India, you come to the traffic lights, you wind down the windows, the kids will try and sell you stuff. Yeah. So they will sell you either tea towels... At half ..or price. fruit... Or even <laughs> the latest Jeffrey Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I had a, you're Honestly, right. no, fruit, no. tea towels, Jeffrey had, uh, book. I That's was, what I've yes, heard when yeah. I was in India. I wound the window down when I was in <laughs> Mumbai. No, don't laugh, it's true. I wound the window down and this Brilliant. little boy said, Priceless. would you like the latest Jeffrey Archer? <laughs> And I said, I am funny. the latest Jeffrey Archer. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and he went, very funny, sir, very funny. Oh, that's absolutely I'm not paid to be a comedian <laughs> but, like you. But I don't know whether they're real. I looked at one quickly and I think they what might they be What they do is they buy they're... it at London Airport. Right. They'll buy Head You Win at London Airport. They fly it over to um, Mumbai. And In God. three days, it's on the street yeah. at half price. Uh, yeah. So they're where's the, the most... profit? Yeah. Oh. In, they're not spending a lot of money in it, producing no, what they're no, spending exactly. me through. Uh, in, 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 okay, in India, okay, she'll yeah, never okay. be an entrepreneur, in, that one. OK, <laughs> they're just photocopying it. Yes. yes. Well, in, in okay. India, copyright means the right to copy, so as long as you know that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we we speak Archer. with some experience, <laughs> clearly. <laughs> I'll give you a card later. <laughs> um, would you like the latest Jeffrey Archer? I am the latest Jeffrey Archer. Oh, brilliant. Um,